Hey everyone, I hope you're having a productive day. I just wanted to make a really quick video. Um, as always, I thank you for taking your time out, sharing with friends and families the videos, and I want to jump right into it. Number one, uh, a lot of you guys are asking for the student loan book. I finally completed it. It's on Amazon. It's called A Quick Guide on How to, to uh, Get Student Loan Relief and Improve Your Credit Score. I always do quick guides for you guys. Uh, this one took me a little longer. I didn't know how in-depth and how big the student loan problem is and um, some of the consequences. You guys definitely need to get the book. Those who are in student loan default, it's very important that you get out of it. It will stay on your credit for the rest of your life until you become current. So um, even parents, before you sign for student loans, you need to know what this can do to your credit and your financial future and before you let your kids get involved into student loans. There's alternative funding out there for you. And there's also for those who currently have student loans, student loan forgiveness completely, especially if you're a teacher or you're working in certain fields with low income people and other services, you can qual even in corrections, you can qualify for student loan forgiveness programs. So definitely check out that book for you guys. It's very important. I'm also giving a uh, seminar slash luncheon on October 17th. Route 22, Tiff's Restaurant, those that's local know it as Tiffany's Restaurant, and it's very close in proximity with um, New York City and also Philly. Come out, you know, if you're in New Jersey and you're struggling with student, um, not only student loan debt information, I have that, but collections and also wanting to boost your credit score, um, it's how to deal with collections and boost your credit score within um, 90 days and uh, by 100 points in 90 days so you guys really need to come and check out the seminar it's only $22 to register and it includes your food so uh, basically it's running with free my friend Michelle Peters she's gonna help people that is in uh, default with their mortgage and give you information um, in order to clear that up and help you guys out um, the actual address is 1637 Vauxhall Road in Union, New Jersey. So the seminar from 1 to 4 p.m. Definitely, um, you'll have the link so you can buy your ticket through Event Planner. So do that. Also, Donetta Mahaffey, the lady that invited me out for the Me and the Mini uh, seminar. Uh, she actually has that seminar that she has put it uh, on video a lot of you guys that's in the music industry wanted that information you can contact her directly i'm going to have the information on this uh video also contact her and let her know that you're interested i'm getting a copy for her so i can get my information i needed it was a excellent seminar she also have a youtube channel and she does consulting in the music industry on how to break in so before you even make your uh, mixtape your, your tape, she'll let you know how you need to format it so you can get airtime for the radio and what some of the steps that you need to do. So definitely see if you can get on to her services and um, definitely reach out to her and ask her information, especially if you're interested on the music industry. So I wanted to get right into the video to help address uh, some of you guys' problems and what you have in with finance and credit. I'm coming from Proverbs. As everybody know, all my information is scriptural, Bible-based. So uh, you have a lot of rich people that actually focus on Proverbs and Ecclesiastics. Really, um, this is your business finance books in the Bible. And there's other scriptures that deal with this, other situations. But this is one of the main core. you got Bill Gates, um, Warren Buffett, Donald Trump, uh, Benjamin Franklin. A lot of people have depend on uh, Proverbs written by Solomon, one of the richest men that ever lived. So I'm coming from Proverbs 14 and 4, and I'm using the New Standard American Version um, interpretation so you can understand it. Where there's no, where no oxen are, the manger is clean, but much revenue comes from the strength of the ox. Basically what this is saying, when you don't have, or if you're a farmer, and an ox is a primary beast of burning to give you a harvest or a big increase in profits. But where there's no oxen, the manger is clean. There's no poop. You don't have to feed it. You don't have to maintain it. But 
there's a lot of revenue and uh, a lot of income to be gained by having the ox and having that business. A lot of you problems come from you don't have other streams of revenue. Your primary income only come from a job. I call myself having a heart of a lion. I eat only what I kill. It's a difference. When you have a job, majority of your money come out goes to taxes. And then you have to live off the breast. And by the end of the year, you might have to pay more taxes. When you own your own business, operate your own business, it's vice versa. I have my money first, do my deductions. And then at the end of the year, I pay my taxes on whatever else is income. And you get huge write-offs. This is how the rich get richer. And it's tax benefits that comes in with it. With my job at Ford, when I end up leaving my job, I made like 80, 70 grand a year, maybe better. If it wasn't for my house as another stream of revenue, I don't know how I would have made it. But it was residual income that's hands off. I love real estate. I have other businesses, but it's one of the best things going. You know, because this was the education that I got as I was growing up. My parents, they always had a good job, but they always had other things going on. A store, like people with a bodega. They had a corner store when I and they owned the building in North, rented out. Bodega going on or, you know, corner store as we call it. You know, they always had something, had a real estate property that they rented out, invested in. And even with these good jobs, it gave them tax shelters, you know, because they had businesses running. And my mother and father, buy a house, buy a house, buy a house, buy a house. You know, don't buy expensive clothes. They never see that into all that stuff. But whenever I needed that cash, I can come to them for that cash money. We were never broke. You know, always had a decent whip, always had a decent ride. When I was in high school, I had a car, you know, for my birthday, had a car ready. They were able to do that because they didn't invest in other things. And this is what we were taught. So when I turned 23, that's all I heard was to get a multifamily. So that was the first avenue I did. One of the piece of the best advices, a uh, piece of advice that I ever got was to invest in multifamilies. So... This came from my own education inside my own ha home. And a lot of people want to blame everybody else for their financial, um, you know, standing in life. My parents came from sharecroppers. They were poor in Jim Crow, Alabama. You know, that's where they came from. So you have no excuse. You know, you have really no excuse. So as men, I don't want to hear the whining anymore. You're the responsibility for your family. You teach women. You teach your children. A lot of y'all kids out of control, spoiled. My daughters go every business venture I go on, they go on. They'll tell you. They there. People that invited me out, they see them right there. So they can understand how they invest. All they hear me, get a, get a house, get a house, get a house. Start a business, start a business, start a business. That's their education. So stop blaming everybody else. For your family and for your household and why you don't know something. You know what? You got Google. You got YouTube. Take self-responsibility sometimes and learn something. It's nobody else. I, I talk to men that, that, that try to talk in a relationship and they in a club on a Tuesday. You want a club in a club on a Tuesday and you're not progressing financially. A lot of you guys are selfish. As Dame Dash said, you hustle for your first name. I hustle for my last. I'm thinking about my grandchildren now and my family lineage. If you're not thinking about inheritance and wealth so your kids don't have to hustle and work like you, then you're selfish. I'll be honest. God honest. You're selfish. So that's your problem. And then you can bring wealth into your family. That's the majority of you, you, you guys' problem. You know, and you want to blame everybody. Well, this one never taught me that. Well, you get on YouTube. Get on Get on the internet and learn what you need to learn. Days of excuses is gone now. What, what are you even back then? They people ain't have excuses. If my parents can do it. You can do it. You can do it too. They come from nothing, nothing. So you have no excuse, you know. And it was no welfare system. It was no aid. Yeah, your aid was you got a job. That was your aid, you know. Or you did something. That was your aid. So let's cut the nonsense and let's cut it out. Stop blaming everybody except for yourself on why you not somewhere in life. Now, some is very rare um, situations 
what people do. Okay, well, I didn't have this. But that only goes so far. It really does. I'm a single mother, no child support. And you know, if I can get up when I left here to go to four, arm baby. My baby was three months. Didn't have any excuses. Nobody cared about my excuses. So that went out the door. So learn that. You know, as they say, man up. Got to man up sometimes. Stop crying. You want some cheese with that wine. Stop it. You know, you take self-responsibility. Also, good partnership. If you don't have something, partner up. Me and Michelle uh, Peters, we're doing a seminar to together. You know, I didn't have the information on the real estate and how to get out of uh, default for your mortgages and avenues. She bring that up. So partner with people. And anybody can start a business. Do services. You know, cut somebody lawn. Clean somebody house. There's people that need all types of things. A friend of mine was dropping off kids in the morning, picking them up in the afternoon for parents. Made a business out of that. There's plenty of ways you can make businesses. So, but number one, you need to stop making excuses. That's that's number one. Stop being a victim. When you're a victim, nothing ain't ever your fault. Victim mentality. You're always somebody victim. So, of course, I can't do something about my situation because I'm a victim. We need to cut that one. Stop it. Our communities, you don't have nobody give you jobs. You be the one to build the jobs, to give other people jobs. So, I hope this can help you with your financial thing. Get assets, not liabilities. Your single family home, that's a liability, not an asset. So, you got to get more assets. Stop picking up liabilities. All right. God bless.